Welcome everybody, and we are so excited to speak here today. Uh, as announced, my name is Jakub Gross, and currently I'm working as the Agile coach in Avast. Hello everybody, I'm also Agile coach at Avast, and my name is Roman Kohoutek. And I know that you hoped that you will just sit down, lay, rest after the lunch. Uh, but anyway, I see that uh, you are all spread uh, across the room. So I would like to ask you actually to stand up. And it's a test if you are listening. It's good. If you can just stand up uh, for those who don't feel comfortable to change the place, feel free to your place or you can move quite closer to us, it will be much comfortable for us. Uh, anyway, uh, I see that, okay, still some people sitting, but uh, if you may really stand up because there will be the exercise needed for us just to know who is our audience. So first of all, those, uh, those who has no practical experience with less, less transformation can now sit down. Good, good. Please, now, uh, the second round. Uh, those who were not in charge of the last transformation can sit down. And by being in charge, uh, it means that you were part of some group or part, part of some team. It's up to you. Yeah, it's based on the feelings. Good. Still few people are standing. Uh, now, those who were part of the transformation, which was about 50 people or less, can sit down. Okay, good. 70 people or less? Perfect. Uh, so the last point, we have about eight people standing. Uh, the last point, if you, you can sit down, if you did not face the consequences, let's say, after a year from the transformation, that you were just hop in, hop out. Good, good. About six people standing. Thank you very much. I believe that you will be the ones uh, who will give us the feedback and maybe share the experience later on. You can also sit down. Today, I will tell you our story. Uh, in the beginning, in the beginning, I have to apologize for the diversity. Uh, Avast actually has a huge focus on the diversity and the same as our department. Uh, we will go, we will today speak about. Anyway, in the beginning of that all, just five guys had the idea. And we met in September 2020 together with a humble goal. Create the best privacy product. Actually, I believe that no excellent ideas are invented in the office. Now, please, you can imagine a village house of our product manager in the Czech Republic. There were animals as hens or dogs. And we have met there and started to think about how to move to another level. We found our tempo, made hundreds of post-its, which is important. But most, impo most importantly, we have specified our expectations from the transformation. And actually, uh, I'm not sure if it's nicely visible, but here there are the expectations which we had. It's a lot of goals, and without the right imagination of the future, we will never go for it. So actually, we knew that it will be worth it. And please, be aware about those goals we had, because they will be important for understanding the way we have decided to go, and which we will show you. Then the next question is about the methodology to be chosen. I know it may be obvious, but uh, I believe it's good to know that we were aware about actually a lot of methodologies and of course we had a lot of certificates. Yeah, because the certification is the most important thing for the transformation, right? Uh, anyway, we had the knowledge of the Spotify model, of the DevOps, Scrum at scale, of course, the amazing save, teams of teams, 
and of course, the less. And after our initial meeting, we have spent intensively the upcoming days to practically imagine the ways we may go. We have discussed some options with Jürgen over there. We have discussed the experience from Ysoft. And finally, we have decided to follow the last principles, actually because we already some kind of follow them. What is important that everybody told us to go by baby steps. Do a smaller, less transformation, and then scale it to huge. Yeah, I see, I see that it's correct. But uh, I believe that we are smart enough. So we said, no. We had already so huge project, so many teams, and our perception was take it all or leave it. So we have decided to go, let's say, by inspired, less huge way. And I'm sorry, uh, especially to the less organizer, organizers that we hyped uh, the logo, but this was the way how we went. Uh, to give you some overview, let's focus more on our scope and organization, that you will know how huge or maybe small it was. I would like to shortly give you the background. So from my current perspective, it's not that huge scope. But at that time, it was the extreme challenge for us. Even if we had one business domain, or let's say one common purpose, we were separated into three departments working on multiple products. In fact, it's one product, but from that time perspective, that products were really different. There were six different platforms, and we speak about a hundred of people. And I'm sorry that I cannot say the exact number, for, especially for those who stand it. Uh, you are aware that the number is still varying uh, across the time. Uh, and basically, you can see it on some kind of schema of the departments we have tried to merge. Uh, as we are not a waterfall-based people, we didn't make a robust timeline and plans. We have just set up the desired date when the transformation will happen. I have to say that it was a desire of our manager. So we had the idea on September and the idea to transform on November. Right now we can call it as foolish. Uh, the reality actually was much harder. We had to hire new ACs, uh, align everybody with the principles, values, practicalities. But we had also some nice ideas as test the flip on so-called dry run. Uh, and actually the flip itself happened in January 2021. But still, only three and a half months, including Christmas, from the initial idea to the flip. Of course, it caused some polishing later on. Uh, it was about, for example, partial team reshuffle, area dissolvement, but uh, these are the topics we will speak about right away. And actually now it will be up to Roman to take you back to the end of 2020. So I would like to ask you, everybody, close your eyes. Yeah, uh, uh, finally, the rest time, close your eyes. And Roman, the stage is yours. Yeah. Thank you, Ekwe. So how was it in the late months of 2020? There was uh, COVID, you know. The traveling was restricted the offices were closed. So at that time, we had to go completely online with the transformation. And what, what major tools have we used for that? For collaboration, it was a mirror board, obviously. At that time, it was the state-of-the-art tool for whiteboarding. And it was already used in Avast. We've been using the main board for the whole event, 
and smaller boards linked to the main one for particular sessions like refinements, definition of done, and teams creation. For communication tool, we've been using Zoom. Uh, it was also already present in Avast environment. And lucky for us, several weeks or months before the transformation started, the Zoom enabled the feature breakout rooms, and it got to the Avast uh, as well. And finally, for the feedback collection throughout the event, or the dry run and the event, we used Mentimeter. It was mostly to, for the reasons of appealing outputs, they were nicer, and also to be able to more appropriate and precisely guide the participants through the questions we had on them. At that time, we felt quite unique using Miro for real collaboration instead of just as a tool for capturing the information. And also we believed that we were one of the first companies which went with the huge less flip event purely online. At least at the time we had no information about it or, or there was no experience heard from anyone else. Uh, we wanted to transform our unit completely online. That was said. We also had the idea, the goals, the motivation that was also said by Cuba. We had the tooling ready. And we had no experience on how to do the flip. Nor any consultancy company which could have helped us with it. So we tried it, obtained the experience, and adapt on it, right? Uh, so we went through the dry run. It was like four hours event. Optional, where allowed about 100 people were invited, and lucky for us, most of them were joined. We tackled there just product vision, refinement, and team creation. Nothing complicated. So. What was the goal of the dry run? Simply set up the safe place to try things. That was the crucial. Safe place for the participants and safe place for the organizers. We wanted to also identify the weak spots on various levels. Get used to the tooling, because some of the tools were not used by any of those participants before. There were no licenses. There were no access to that. Internet connection was slow for some people. Also, the equipment was, uh, was slow. So this was a good opportunity. We also wanted to get familiar with building blocks of the whole event. And the best thing, we could get some preview of how teams could look like based on this short dry run. Uh, for teams creation purposes, we identified what is missing. And we were able to verify the time boxes. But most importantly, we were able to collect the feedback from the event and adapt it for the real flip team creation. So in short, what were the outcomes? From the tooling perspective, it was feasible to be done. From the team setup creation perspective, the people wanted to stick together no matter what. So that will be pain to do it for the real. And also throughout the dry run, we saw that there are significant differences in HR mindsets of individuals and, and groups of people. Maybe we were scarecrows to go through the dry run. But uh, one of our Agile coaches is a Boy Scout, so we wanted to uh, be prepared. So several weeks after dry run, we did the real flip. It was a whole week event. Main session were on afternoons. 
supportive sessions were during evenings and mornings. The reason was mainly because we were spread across time zones from United States to India, and also to provide the time to rest for the participants. We started with general topics, like uh, defining roles and describing the values. Then we shift to the product-related areas, I would say, like objectives, refinements, areas, and so on. And finally, after all that, we proceeded with the team's creation. On top of this core part of the event, let's say, the each day ended with the feedback collection, and there was also a socialization block. In the morning next day, there were so-called product managers and agile coaches clinics. More about these building blocks and on some specialties, we'll be talking, I will be talking on next slides. So how did we work with feedback? At the end of each day, we, uh, there was a simple survey in Mentimeter, and it was tailored to the content of the day. Uh, the Agile coaches captured the result, made them transparent on the board, visible for all the people, and adapted, adjusted the next day based on the results, ideas, feedback, and so on. We were mainly tackling the exhaustiveness, the length of the sessions, and fatigue of the, of the participants. Crucial for us was the day when we asked the teams whether they are satisfied with the new recreative team, with the area they belong to, and also with the whole department, let's say the less bubble, they, are, they will be situated. Fortunately for us, majority was satisfied and we may proceed with the, let's say, business. Another session, part of the event, were so-called socialization blocks. We all knew that the most interesting things, the agreements, decisions, getting to know each other, happens on the backstage, behind the scene. So at the end of the day, we started a Zoom call to support this and provide some networking platform. First session helped people just to get to know each other. Later sessions helped newly created teams to discuss their fit, how they feel about it, and confirm whether there is a good team. The clinics. Each morning, prior to the main event, there were product managers and agile coaches clinic. The main purpose was to have open communication channel related to product and people. On those calls, product managers and agile coaches were supporting, uh, various, were variously supporting the participants for whatever they need. Uh, for many of them, the participants, it was like the first time ever they had a chance to design their own future. It was a completely new situation for them. We couldn't forget, of course, on definition of done. Usually the definition of done should be one of the outputs of a flip event. You can see on the screen that we have achieved to consensus about the elements of definition of done for hundreds of people in about one hour. Uh, none of the elements of DOD were controversial or, and they all were accepted by, by everyone. I bet you are curious 
how do actually the team creation phase run. So here it is. Each individual had his own card, uh, including product owners and agile coaches. On the card, there were various information, like the name, time zone, role, some specialty, uh, information about platform knowledge, domain knowledge, some soft skills, some custom fields, and hobbies, of course. Uh, the template was empty. The, the template was the same for everyone. And uh, the people just filled in the colors based on the level of knowledge. Based on the dry run feedback, we set just one goal. It was to create end-to-end -end team which is able to deliver as many backlog items as possible. Once again, to create end-to-end -end team which is able to deliver as many backlog items as possible. On top of that, we guided teams to consider also other things, like seniority level, chemistry, diversity of competencies, and team chemistry. So the playground was set. Everybody has his own card on the board, and the frames for the teams were empty. The actual process of teams creation consisted of three rounds. In the first round, we tried to support everyone's creativity and experimentation. So the first possible teams emerged. In the second round, we dissolved all the teams and let them form again. And finally, the third round was mostly only helping the individuals which were not able to find a fit or right place. Right after the team creation, each of the teams has assigned his area and paired with a coach. Together with a coach later on, they created their identity and set up primary collaboration space and events. The flip was over. Everybody went home for the weekend with the new, possibly right home. OK. Thank you very much, Romana. Uh, I hope it was not too much complex or too much boring, but for us, it was important to you to show what we were speaking about and what we went through. But actually, the core of today's session uh, will be about a little bit different point of view. And actually, I will need to ask you uh, just if you can raise your hand or say me for those who actually love the positive examples from the practice. Good, perfect, thank you. And uh, I would like also to ask uh, those who love to hear about so-called fuck-ups Okay, slightly more, uh, almost equal. Uh, what, we, what we are facing usually in the conferences are these two extremes. Yeah, that uh, in many cases or talks, we are hearing or reading uh, the perfect achievements or total fuck-ups. But I believe that the reality is actually somewhere in the middle. Something goes right, something goes wrong. And actually, I am here the optimistic person who has like the positive, uh, positive point of view on that. And due to that, I will play today the white swan. Yeah, optimism is, optimism is really good. But much more value you can find on opposite sides. So let's be realistic here. I will not let you persuade the audience that everything was amazing. I'm the black swan here today. So let's move on one year after the transformation started and let's speak about the consequences. Actually, uh, not, not one year, this is what happened right after the transformation. Right after the transformation, okay. 
Anyway, so right after transformation, several teams and people were simply not able to work autonomously. Some of them wanted the specification of what they should do. They were unable to plan any work whatsoever. They just wanted to be tasked. Yes, but luckily the majority of the teams were able to collaborate and somehow enjoyed the autonomy. And even we have one perfect example of the team. Uh, it was the most non-agile team. And uh, they started to challenge the others about the basic values. And actually in a few weeks, maybe months, they have become the most agile team. So the agile mindset in all of the teams has started to grow. Another situation was about the product areas. We were able to set up three logical areas of objectives. I believe you are all aware about the areas from the less huge. Yeah, and uh, those areas had the specific direction and this is awesome. We have achieved that. Uh, we, of course, locked those areas and the teams and people inside uh, because they needed to focus on their scope and uh, to, to be able to achieve the goals. Yeah, and this is wonderful. We made it. Sure. Areas were somehow artificial. People from one area were asking whether they can collaborate with the people from different area. That's crazy, right? Some of them didn't have expertise for the things that need, needed to be done in the area, and they maintained their previous products. Naturally, they tended to work on it because they didn't have anything else to work on from their area they were kind of selected. So after a few weeks after the flip, we broke down the areas because it didn't brought us any value. What's the learning? Well, don't create the areas from the table based on theories, you think, but simply let them emerge and establish based on coming needs. Chemistry, chemistry in the team, and how can you ensure it if you are in a digital medium, like boards, Zoom calls, and the relationship is distant? In some cases, the social engineering we tried to do didn't work and took a really lot of time to set some chemistry. Next time, we should let people to know each other before the flip. Even knowing right now that it is hard for 100 and people and that it will take a lot of time. Yes, but on the other hand, still remember that it was the COVID time. You were at homes, not being able to meet, and we have invested a huge time actually to people, let people know each other from the professional, from the personal point of view. And uh, we wanted to assure that the chemistry works. We even, we even sent a cocktail packages to everybody, everybody within the teams before the Christmas. And we had a big socialization session with some mixology and then a lot of discussions. And actually, we planned it for two hours. It took four hours. So... I believe that it was not that unsuccessful, and even during the flip, as mentioned previously, there was a space for the socialization. So I would say that in the given circumstances and the isolations, we were successful. We have the fourth situation. Uh, we also spent a huge time, or sufficient time, during the flip and even, even before focusing on the objectives and tasks because we wanted to have the backlog fulfilled. We did it to be sure that all the teams will have clear focus what they may work on. And I'm actually happy about it because working together or achieving something 
in common is a perfect way to start a new team. Yes, yes. But people tended to work on their flip products and applications. And they treated the objectives, something which needs, needed to be done, as something extra. The backlog simply didn't reflect the teams, or vice versa. And they were not able to find any work to collaborate on inside the team. So collaboration had no chance to emerge. And even worse, some of the product owners were directly giving tasks to individuals. What is the learning? Well, it seems like if we would spend much more closer work with the product owners to let them know and understand what their role is, and also think more about establishing the clear accountability. Perfect. Let's move on into the fifth out of six situations here. It was about the teams. We had a great opportunity to let the teams to form themselves. And we used it because I believe it should be like that. And it was almost without the strict rules. We gave them just the recommendations to create the teams to have as much as possible technical competencies and as much as possible knowledge from all the products and to have at least three people from different team they were used to work with previously. So it was a perfect ground for the creation of cross-functional, cross-platform and cross-product teams in once. Yeah, let's be a little bit realistic here. The only teams which has some potential to be functional were actually those that had something in common, like, like platform or some, some technology or simply something they would care about. We broke everything and call it cross-functional. It was not possible for the teams to work together on something. Our recommendation is not to try to make everything like cross. Focus on end-to-end -end first and expand the cross-functionality as you go. We actually had to heal this situation by partial team reshuffle after two months and reduce the biggest pains by that. Okay, the last after flip situation was regarding the coaches. Actually. Yeah. So, how dare you to go huge less transformation with coaches which were hired just one month prior to the event? They didn't have enough time to make a team. It was their first transformation as a participants, much less about the facilitators. And the date of the transformation was already set. They were not even included in the ideation phase of the whole circus, let's say. What a folly. But we love to gamble. So when, if not that time? We have started with three coaches in September and one of them resigned during the process. But we were able to onboard an amazing group of coaches, some of them externally, looking forward for the transformation and already with the experience regarding the flip, and some of them internally from the other parts of the organization and they knew our environment. In just few weeks, they stepped into the world transformation preparation. And actually, I do not recommend to follow our lucky way. Yeah, because I believe that we were really lucky, but we have built a strong Agile Coaches team in not imaginable time because we had our common goal with a clear ownership together. What may be even more interesting for you is one year later. Now we are moving in autumn 2021 
And it was nearly a year after the idea uh, of all the events we have presented today. Definitely there were some positive achievements and some low lights. I believe that in the next part you are not going to hear some revolutionary recommendations from our side. Uh, most probably you will hear uh, those recommendations which you heard several times already. But actually once we go for the flip, we heard them also. Maybe we just forget some, so of some of them, so we believe that it's important to repeat them. Yes, we reverted some of the teams from mobile department, let's say, or the part of the product development. Several engineers quit their job and the situation became a little bit critical. Also, they had like no objectives which will serve the cross-platform way they were set up. So we just reverted those two teams and made them platform ones, like the Android team and the iOS team. So not all the teams need to be cross-platform, as long as they fit the wall system. So a recommendation here would be that don't keep all groups intact and don't force them to become a team. Something is wrong, you need to find it, and don't be afraid to change it. Okay, maybe some positive one about the cross-functional teams. Actually, two-thirds, roughly two-thirds of our teams has become cross-functional and agile in their nature, I would say. They internally understood the agile values and followed it. They started or continued bring the ideas and uh, they were not needed to be tasked the objectives started to be sufficient for them to follow. And I know that my recommendation may sound in opposite to the previous one, but those two needs to be in balance. If you did the transformation correctly and you still invest in it, most of the teams will actually make you happy. Coach is burnout. I could say that we were constantly fighting on multiple better grounds at once. With new organizational structure and pushback from the teams, from people. With mindset in the teams and in the individuals. With the product definition and the teams within the teams, basically. And also the amount of teams some coaches were guiding and serving was more than two. So soon the coaches became the hamsters in the wheel, unable to step out. So the recommendation here is simple, but we forgot it about it. So you don't forget about your agile coaches. Sometimes they do forget about themselves. Okay, let's move to product owners. Actually, they have struggled with the approach initially. But during several months, they have become a real PO team. To be able to orchestrate the backlog, uh, they have decided to create a role of PO goalie, uh, which was a rotatable role every, let's say, three months. Uh, also, they have evaluated their own enhanced rise scoring for a proper prioritization across all the platforms and all the sub-products. And actually this was led, uh, or this was leading into one backlog. What is the recommendation over here? Yeah, that for most of the coaches are usually the teams, the top priority. Business mechanism may be somehow not that important. But actually, all the agility has to be about delivered business value. Don't forget to take care about business and product as same as about your teams. For a long time, we were focused 
very much on ourselves, on the bubble we were creating. And interconnections with other departments were not supported. And if they occur, they were handled just individually and without any systematic approach. In the future, it had changed a little bit with a new product coming our way. And with that and the moving part of the leadership team from the, that, uh, the department to the new product, it a little bit improved. So if the whole company is not included in the, in the transformation, please don't forget still to create uh, the, the insights, the, the examples, share the stories uh, and things, and somehow infect the surroundings. It will pay off in the future. Okay, uh, I will speak a little bit about the transparency, because we knew that the transparency is a key. Maybe you heard it several times, but from my perspective it's true. And our department became the real example of the transparency. Uh, we had public slab groups, open mirror boards, yeah, except the retrospective ones, uh, no access restrictions or Google Drive, uh, common meetings were recorded and shared, and even more the calendars of people started to be public, and uh, even our top, top department manager followed that. We stopped to hear the usual, usual phrases as, I didn't know about that, or please, can you grant me the access? And the operations became really so easy. So the recommendation from our side that even if the people in the beginning were especially afraid about having transparent calendars, then, uh, then actually they saw that the, it has no negative consequences. And actually the only people remained not to be transparent were those who did not share our values. Those people were, for example, those who tried to make the politics or tried to keep the single point of failures by themselves, by the purpose. There are still people, after one year, in leading positions which have very difficult or different view on agility. They are both on management levels, and also inside the teams. Sometimes they want just to keep the power, or they are afraid to lose it, basically, or they making decisions without the knowledge and the, and the alignment. So work with them on individual basis. Don't rely on assumptions like they are leaders, they should change, they know how to do it. Maybe find them different place or assignment or to find a way how to help them, basically. Okay, and the last point, the new normal. We spoke about transparency, but in general, the new normal was the new culture which has taken the place. It was the safe environment. There were several mechanisms as kudos took place. And for those who tried kudos and failed, so I believe that we are one of those examples where it really, really worked. We gave the teams autonomy uh, and even we gave them the budgets for team building to decide whatever they would like to do. Uh, we also made a salary fairness exercise yeah, that they can express and distribute actually even the salaries. Uh, and so they decided how or at least showed the way how the team members should be rewarded and, and actually many more mechanisms. So what is our recommendation and message? Never stop. Once we have stopped and started to focus more on the processes, then we were lost. Processes should be done by the team members or by the teams. And we as agile coaches are just guiders and let's say cultural influences. Well, nothing will persist forever. After a year within the new setup, we are architectonically connected with other products. The core libraries are shared, 
and we have common objectives. So basically part of us from the original department is some managers, agile coaches, product owners, and even the engineers, we have decided to step out of our comfortable area. We left our department and joined a new one. Luckily, still closely connected to our previous department, and we started to spread the principles and the way of work. And then the idea of modularization, or so-called SDKization of the department appeared. It included even slightly more people. And after that, there is a famous Norton merger with Avast. So, what else? Yeah, we, we are going to actually finalize the merger Avast, merger Avast Norton, and we can say that everything what we have built may be lost. Organizational changes, technical setup, product changes, all of them are expected. Yeah, generally, everything's so much typical for huge acquisitions. But we know we are back in the beginning of the new journey, but the most important persists. So the individuals knows we may work differently, and the functional teams, which we will fight to keep, because they are amazing, most probably will stay here also. If you will ask us whether we will do it again, knowing how hard it was, we can evaluate it, we can learn some things, see what we learned, see some weak points, how worthy it is, and everything basically we will spoke about. Yeah, but if we should do it once again, the definite answer is yes, we will go for it. And actually that's it from our, our side, and we would be happy for some questions. If you have any. Okay, there is one. Okay, um, I don't think I meant, heard the mention of any Scrum Masters. Were there any Scrum Masters? Yeah, I can, I can respond that. Yeah, we, the five guys which we were talking about and referring here as Agile coaches were Scrum Masters. But we were in a corporate environment and eventually we became Agile coaches. So that's, that's how it began. Uh, yeah. I actually have many questions. I was one of the people standing. Um, but I tried to ask them the, f the first one and give the opportunity and then maybe. So the flip, um, what well, I'm interested in what actually did change after the flip. I understand it was the cross-functionality of the teams and you wanted to create the feature teams. I'm also interested in what did not change. Maybe you just didn't speak about it. For instance, the department structure or HR policies or whatever, because it can be forces that later influenced. It's a perfect question. Thank you for that. So what has been changed is actually those departments, there were three departments previously, became one department. What has changed was the line of reporting, the management. So there was like two main managers for 100 people and that was it. Yeah, so we really like saved a lot of resources because it was not needed from that kind of perspective. So no intermediate managers, team leaders whatsoever? Uh, officially, on, in some of the teams, some of the people still were there as the leaders or team leaders. It was more about the politics. Yeah, but uh, there were... In the first place, they were part of the team and they knew it, yeah, even if they were some kind of servant leaders, but still it was like quite a flat structure from that perspective. Yeah. Uh, I, w I would add one well, pretty important thing which, uh, which changed, and it was, uh, maybe it was not spoken, but it was a cultural change. 
it was not like uh, from zero to 100. But after one year, you can see that people started to behave. They, they were bothered by things which, were, which they back at that time promoted. So that's, that's really the important aspect. Could you give me an example of a, such a perfect behavior? Yeah, like, okay, complaining about why your calendar is not open, that's perfectly normal to, to have it for most those kind of examples. In general, during the flip and in that period, we have received a lot of complaints and asked, please solve it. We don't agree with that. Now, what I have observed is that if someone is not happy about something, they speak firstly with the team and they propose some kind of solution and even more, usually they try even to change it directly. So that may be the example of the cultural change. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Thank you for passing the mic. Uh, thank you. You said something that uh, if you could do it once again, maybe you would spend a little bit more time with the POs working on their role. Can you tell us where was the major gap? What needs to be fulfilled? Yeah, basically in that time, uh, we had seven POs, about seven POs, and until the flip, they had a clear product. Yeah, and so let's say they were the solitaires. They were in three different departments, and uh, their reporting structure was previously even somewhere else, you know, like for the product organization. Each of them worked absolutely differently, and so let's say half of them had no clue what is the Agile about. Yeah, and we underestimated the work with them to explain it, the principles, to have them in their nature. So I believe that if I will do something in a different way, then I will spend definitely much more time with them and even more include, that, include them into the whole process of the preparation. Who else? We have like, I don't know, seven minutes, six, seven minutes. Or maybe we can have some Hello. time to prepare. Hello. Hi. Uh, great, great talk, guys. Uh, two quick questions. Uh, first, you mentioned something about the salary transparency giving uh, teams information about it. Can you please share a few more lines regarding that one? And the second thing that you said, um, you had two managers, uh, one managing 50 people. Uh, I somehow have doubts about that one person can efficiently manage so much people. So maybe comment or question, I don't know. Manage. Manage. So I will start backwards from, from managing part of you. What worked for us that we, the, the responsibilities of management before the flip were about uh, a lot of like people one-to-one, -one, taking care also about the work uh, and, and so on, really a lot, lot of things. But after the flip, also the responsibilities of managers changed. They were just simply receiving the feedback and working with the feedback. And that, that, was, that, that was it. So that was the ability which helped us to, get the, to flatten the structure, I would say. Yeah, like one of those two managers like to say, now I'm here mostly for approving the vacation because I know that you have approved it internally with your team and formally uh, say uh, yes to increase the salary. Yeah, and then it was more about the outside management world, but definitely the role of the manager changes. Yeah, people got used that most of the stuff they can solve by them themselves. And uh, for the second question, uh, or actually for the first question, uh, this was about the salaries. Uh, we were not definitely in the level that the salaries will be transparent, but it was one of the mechanisms what we used to help the teams uh, to be closer or to collaborate. And uh, the mechanism was that each of the team, they had about, let's say, a million crowns, and they had a simple task to distribute it to their team members, yeah, based on how they saw they contribute 
and so the results were actually not not what we have expected because it matched the salaries in many cases, but there were about five, six people who were really overestimated and about five, six people who were underestimated. So there has been some salary corrections based on that and actually uh, people started to trust themselves and even trust the system. And I believe that we have time for one last question. Thank you for the beautiful presentation and the style of this good and evil, you know. I feel like, uh, I sometimes feel when it, inside my head I hear this voice, it's like, yeah, this is success, no, this is disaster. So, <laughs> like an imp, you know, an angel on, on, on shoulders. So, the question is, can you showcase some uh, outcomes for the product and for end customers of your organization, how your adoption of less affected them, affected business outcomes as well, so you can promote maybe. If I can have one additional question, the examples of requirement areas you have chosen for this. Yeah, and how, how it affects. You, you, you have some ex expectations from owners of organization from this adoption, yeah? And what was the outcome if to compare expected reality? Thank you. Okay, that is a marvelous question, and I believe we can speak about that even later on. But uh, long story short, short answer will be uh, that we have set up those three areas. Uh, we try to design them to be across all the previous product and platforms, and we have failed in that, basically because we made it from the table. Yeah, the product owners sat down, maybe some seniors also contributed, but it was a failure regarding the business value how we delivered it, uh, then I know that one of the managers started to be really, uh, really, let's say, how to say it? Uh, Excited? Not, uh, no, 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 the opposite side. Not angry, but uh, not it, confident. Uh -huh. Not confident, that is the right wording. And uh, actually, after a month, after the flip, he started like, to ask about the pushback. But uh, actually, I believe it was like two or three months after we started to be back on the productivity, but we had definitely like three months of almost like really poor delivery. And uh, after that, it raised and I believe that it's better. Yeah. I will just have a little tiny example of what changed on the product level and teams together. Some, some team had an idea to release an Easter egg for their VPN application. On the day when the Matrix went to the theaters, they just consulted with the prepare the world solution and consulted with the product owner. Uh, he said, like, okay, let's do it, and they do it. So there was like not asking for permission to do it, but like that, that's it. So that's also changed. And I believe that the time is up. And actually, I see that there are more questions, so don't worry to come to us. Uh, I'm so much thankful for the questions because, it's, because it means that someone uh, was listening, which is <laughs> awesome. And actually, thank you very much.